And my family, very religious, very religious. In fact, when I was 16, I started acting up. A lot of your families would have called a psychiatrist. My family called an exorcist. I <laughs> don't recommend being exorcised. If it's happened to any of you, it's fucking weird. They strap you to the bed, right? And then the priest starts throwing holy water on you, fucking going into my mouth. I was coughing and sputtering, and I was tied to the bed. And my dad, he was one of these guys who believed, you know, if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. He didn't think this gibbering in Latin and this holy water was enough. So he grabbed the wooden cross from the wall, started hitting me with it, you know, hitting me. And I was like, ah, ah, ah. And so when the priest said, Satan, I figured I might as well play along. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, yeah, yes, I am Satan. <laughs> the priest went, Satan, leave this boy. I said, ah, I'm leaving. Then I got an idea, I pointed at my dad and said, I'm going into him. <laughs> uh, though that wasn't a serious relationship, it only lasted two weeks. My last real relationship was in Canada with Patricia. Complicated, because she was a psychologist. You cannot win an argument with a psychologist or a therapist. I was with her five years, I did not win one fucking argument. She would cheat in arguments. I'd make a good point, she'd look at me and use her psychobabble. She'd be like, mm, that's not you talking. <laughs> that was your fear talking. I was like, I know what my fear sounds like. It doesn't do voice impressions. <laughs> my fear sounds like, ah! And if you ever date a psychologist, never let them find out about any traumatic events which happened in your childhood because they will use it to explain every single thing you do. <laughs> like this isn't a joke, this is a sad fact. When I was younger, I was molested. She found this out, she started bringing it up. She'd be like, Delisa, I think you're afraid of commitment. And I think the reason you're afraid of commitment is because you were molested. And I was like, do you have to bring this up at a Christmas dinner party? <laughs> in front of all of my friends and my uncle. <laughs> And then there was another day I saw her getting a little frisky with someone else. I said, that's not acceptable. She said, Delisa, you can't trust me. In fact, I think you can't trust anybody because you were molested. I was like, that's got nothing to do with it. Your tongue was down his throat. <laughs> and she said, you saw that? Well, are you sure you saw what you think you saw? Because I read in my psychology textbook that people who've been through traumatic events in their childhood like you, in later life, you can hallucinate. So maybe you didn't see what you thought you saw. I was like, well, well, I was reading that psychology textbook of yours too, and I read that people who've been through traumatic events in their childhood, like me, in later life, we can flip and kill people. <laughs> she said, are you threatening me? I said, that's not you talking. <laughs> that's your fear talking. <laughs> now, I admit, ladies, that's a bit of a vindictive joke. But to put it in context, we were together for a long time. It was a wonderful relationship. Then I got deported from Canada, kind of threw a wedge between us. Okay. Then last year, she got married to someone else, which is depressing. I don't know if any of you have had an ex get married. It messes with you. You start looking back over a decision you made and regretting it. You're like, should I really have said that that time? Should I really have come home that late that night? Should I really have tried to stick it up her butt? No. <laughs> Somewhere I did something wrong. <laughs> and she didn't get married quietly either. She sent me an email with JPEG images of the wedding, like. <laughs> but I'm a comedian. Anytime anything depresses me, I try to make a joke about it. It gives me power over it. I mean, I even did jokes about being molested. Anything terrible which has happened, if I make it funny, I gain some power. So when Patricia got married, I was like, I have to make this funny. And I couldn't do it. I was looking at the pictures and I was like, make it funny, come on, make it funny. I tried for five hours. I'm a professional stand-up comedian. The best I could do was to print the photos out and draw a little mustache. <laughs> Showed you. <laughs> oh, and this thing, that's your fear talking, that's your fear talking. And I say it as a joke, but it's true. There are times when your fear is talking instead of you. There are a lot of things which people do where they're listening to their fear instead of their logic. Uh, one example is homophobia. Homophobia is one big... Uh, uh, I, I don't understand some of the things people overreact to. Like, like gay marriage, the, the people who, who campaign against it. Are we fans of gay marriage? Gay, gay marriage? Yeah. yeah, clap your hands, clap your hands. I mean, I'm a huge fan. 
for a number of reasons. Number one, strictly practically speaking, okay, gay marriage doubles my chances to get British citizenship, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, it's also, it's like, oh, it's their lives. Let them do what they want, you know? I don't know why people want to step into other people's lives. And the homophobia is so pervasive. Men in the UK can't even hug each other. I saw one man hugging another man. His friend freaked out. Hey, hey, you a puff? <laughs> it's just a hug. And sometimes men need a hug. But the only time it's okay in your weird culture to hug another man is when you're watching sports and somebody scores. After the goal, you have a 45 second window. <laughs> when you can do anything, you can hug him, you can stick your tongue down his throat, it's all good. But at 46 seconds, you're now a poof. <laughs> and I remember when Patricia broke up with me, I was very depressed, very, very depressed. And I had nothing I could do, so I invited my friends over to watch a game. And I was staring at the screen going, score, <laughs> score. Somebody score. Yes, hold me. <laughs> mm. But there are lots of times when your, your, your fear is talking instead of you. And racism is indeed one of the biggest cases which I talk about. And a lot of people assume that the worst thing that can happen to you when it's to do with racism, when someone says a bad name, calls you a nigger or something like that. But the truth is, it hurts, but at the same time, you get used to it, and you're just like, they're ignorant, you get angry at them, and you walk away. It doesn't actually really scar you. The time in my life which hurt the most wasn't when somebody yelled a bad name at me, wasn't when somebody was following me with their eyes in a store. The time which hurt the most was when I was living in South Africa. I mean, South Africa, apartheid has been over for a number of years, but it takes a while for it to get out of the mindset. And I remember I was in the streets of Pretoria, and a child was scared of me. And that hurt much more than someone calling me a name. Because I felt like I had done a bad thing. This kid was terrified. And I couldn't walk up to him and make him feel better because if I step closer, he gets more scared. It was so weird, too. I was walking down the street. Seven-year-old kid, you'd think a seven-year-old is too young to be racist. But he absorbed it from his parents. So he saw me walking down the street. He panicked, black man. And he crossed the road to the other side. And I noticed he did not look left or right before crossing the road. <laughs> His parents had done a better job teaching him to be afraid of niggers than fast-moving vehicles. <laughs> and it's simply listening to their fears, man. Listening to their fears, all of them, all of it, be it sexism, be it any form of prejudice, homophobia, racism, it's, 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 it's fear of that which is different. It's different from you, you put it in a box. And I don't even know why we celebrate Halloween. It's, not, it's nothing to be happy about. It's a terrible thing. In fact, if you get people scared enough, you can get away with anything. You can stick in little CCTV cameras everywhere and monitor them. You can invade another country if you get your population kind of angry enough to support it. I think Halloween should be terrifying because fear should not be celebrated. Hmm? You should be coming up to the end of October being, oh no, it's next week, it's next week. And instead of vampire costumes, vampires don't scare you, right? They don't scare me, yeah. Zombies, zombies don't scare you. It's just, uh, if you want to scare me, instead of zombie costumes, let's introduce the ex-girlfriend costume. Because <laughs> everybody's had that nightmare, huh? It's worse than Dracula, the ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend nightmare. Because Dracula, it's simple. You wake up screaming! You look around the room, there's nobody there, you go back to sleep. Ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend nightmare. You don't wake up screaming, you wake up weeping. <laughs> you look around the room, there's nobody there, that just makes it worse. <laughs> you look at the empty spot in the bed where she used to sleep, it breaks your heart. You look at the empty chair where she used to sit, it breaks your heart. You look at the empty set of handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> and even if you've got a new girlfriend, you're in trouble. Oh. I told you I made a list of the times I panicked. This was number two. Because I woke up after having a nightmare about my ex-girlfriend, I was crying, tears streaming down my face. She put her arms around me and she said, are you okay? What did you dream about? <laughs> what could I say? I couldn't say I was dreaming about Dracula. Dracula does not make you cry like a baby. 
what could I say? I couldn't say I was dreaming about Dracula. I couldn't say I was dreaming about my ex. What? Are you nuts? Honesty would have got me stabbed. So what could I say? What could I say? What could I say? I'll tell you the truth. It's the only time in my entire life that it worked to my advantage that I was molested. <laughs> it was the perfect excuse. <laughs> Now, some people are laughing. <laughs> I noticed all the Africans are laughing, actually, because we have a kind of darker sense of humor, I think. But I do that joke. I do that joke in my show. I always do that joke in my show. And people sometimes ask me, how can you make jokes about that? How can you make jokes about that? It's not funny. It's not it's a bad thing. But the truth is, that's why I'm a comedian. That's why I'm a comedian. Because I went through terrible things when I was younger. And I was a depressed kid. I was. Uh, Oh, always angry, and then I even went to these support groups, but I, they may help other people, that they just made things worse for me. Because every week, you'd go and you'd complain about the same problems, get more angrier. I was like a hamster on the wheel, hamster on the wheel, until I realized, you know what I have to do? These bad things happen to me. Yeah, but I'm standing, I'm still standing. So what I have to do is I have to take them and I have to flip them and use them to my advantage. I was reading all these books. My favorite quote is from a writer called Gilbert Chesterton who said that fairy tales are true, not because they tell us that dragons exist, but because they tell us that dragons can be beaten. And I love what he said, because I do think that there's nothing so painful that you can't find some way to use it for your advantage. And people are like, come on, come on, you can't use being molested for your advantage. Yes, I can. <laughs> I don't know what you do when you don't want to go to work. You probably just pretend you're sick or something like that, go <coughs> into the phone, something like that, not, not, not me. If I don't want to go to work, I don't go. I just don't go. And if the boss calls me and says, hey, you didn't come into work today, I just say, hey, boss, it's a cold day. I was molested on a cold day. <laughs> Anything, there is nothing bad that you can't make funny. Racism, racism is depressing, yes. I don't let it, I don't let it ruin my life. If I'm in a store and the owner is a little racist, start following me with his eyes, I have a bit of fun at his ignorant expense. I just go. <laughs> excuse me, yes, excuse me, can you help me? I want to steal this. <laughs> 